know so <laughs> your problem is already interesting, but can you give us like some specific example or like how you organize uh, for example like a political like do you have any program meeting with uh, some activists? You know, we want to give them really a experiential like meeting a real experience and also apply, you know, come together with the intelligence. So yeah, um can you give us a little bit? Um, sure. I mean, based on what you told us a little bit earlier, your students are focusing on social, political, cultural, economic, and ecological issues, right? That's what you'd like. And I'm assuming that you'd like to, give, given their um, range of students, that you probably have some that have a little bit more in-depth and, and, and a little less in-depth knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well. We specialize in a couple of areas um, based on the relationships that we built. Um, we have um, we work with organizations that work um, in issues surrounding global economics, okay, um, militarization, uh, and also immigration issues. And we also touch on uh, popular resistance to oppression and violence. Um, an example of something that we might do and that we have done in the past uh, with our groups is that, uh, for example, in our global economics, uh, we've taken them um, through the impacts of, we've taken them to our partners that work in a farming setting, um, and uh, we have followed um, the, the farmers, uh, the, their production pattern for their food, um, introduce them to the daily process that the farmer has to do to get the food out. Um, and after meeting with the farmer and understanding that process, we've then taken them to the local stores to show them the produce and the connection and ask them to make the connection with the products that they have at home uh, and the difference between. We look at pricing issues and we taught, we've tied that into an economics uh, uh, seminar uh, as well. We could do a range of specifically focused seminars. We can also um, we can also look at each dimension that you're interested in um, within one organization, if you'd like. It depends on how you guys would like to organize the information for the students. Because we have a wide variety of groups, everybody um, likes to pick a different focus. Maybe what I might suggest, if you're looking at a, a more in-depth program, is that we go issue by issue, but um, that is, you know, based on past experience, and I think we can probably work together to come up with something, if that's something that you're interested in. Could you talk a little bit more about the uh, militarization? Mm -hmm. what, what is that component? Um, well, Steph, do you have anything to add? It's not <laughs> my area of expertise. Um, well, I'm not too sure, actually. Okay. Sorry. Um, we have actually a partner that specializes in the, the concept, the issues that surround militarization. So we're not dealing with um, taking uh, you know, our participants into a dangerous zone. We're dealing more predominantly um, with exposing them to the effects um, on people's lives. Um, so we look at the, the border relationships and we also look at um, uh, within the schools, we look at recruiting programs um, and how the youth are affected. Um, we could draw a nice parallel, actually, because we have looked in the past at how youth are affected by the militarization um, on both sides of the border. That might actually be a nice thing, but that's what, what we've done in the past is focus specifically on the Mexican side. Um, but given the range of interests that your group has, it might be neat to link that back to their reality. That's kind of um, what we go through. And um, I know that this sometimes is um, specific to um, your group uh, in terms of levels of exposure that you want to bring, how close, how much you want to expose your uh, participants to. So we would have probably have to have a pretty in-depth discussion before we go into that about what um, what types of um, situations you want to explore with your students. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have a pretty particular clientele based on um, what you've told us. To be honest, my concerns are really about the academics. Um, 
we're looking for a lot of historical context. Uh, mm -hmm. This is really a survey, and it includes Mexico, but mm -hmm. isn't limited to Mexico. So that's one of my big concerns with using you as a provider. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure how Latin America, the Caribbean, Central America, all come into play with this type of a program. But that is included in our curriculum. Okay. Um, so we're, we're pretty concerned about providing our students with that survey. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if we can adapt. I think it's great to use the experiential learning. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to use the border. I it's a great example for the students. And I think we can link it back. Mm -hmm. But again, the breadth, I'm not sure if that's there. Yeah. Well, I think we have to be realistic in what we can provide. We, we definitely know that we have this area. We have in this area something that you will not get if you go with somebody who does all three areas because we have a specific depth and we have the connections that could help um, you to develop a, a broader program with other organizations that do work like us. Um, it depends. So we definitely can't t take you beyond the border, we can help facilitate those relationships and we know that the focus, if you decide to go with us for this area, would probably be um, uh, within this region and within those those partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'd be interested in finding out, you know, what you guys, um, you know, if you are developing this program further, we would definitely be interested in working with you because it sounds like you have a really neat group of kids. Um, yeah. Um, do you have some other questions? Um, well, the, yeah, well, I wasn't sure we wanted to go with that, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand that, um, the way I understand it, we want to learn Pacific, mm -hmm. um, experiential and also intellectual, and then put them together and, uh, you know, in a, in a larger picture. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three weeks, that's a lot of information. I mean, I'm just thinking, I can imagine the kids, uh, we've done programs with professionals and they were, you know, pretty um, immersed after a long time. One thing you might want to think about as you're designing a program for the children is, um, I don't know how exposed they're going to be after that three weeks. It's pretty, it sounds like pretty deep things that you want to go into with them. You might consider focusing on on Mexico for for this, you know, this term, and then moving forward through there. We're not sure if that fits with you, but if you did decide um, to think about that, we could help talk through the benefits of, of really maintaining more specific focus. I'm just my kids had been were recently on a study tour, and um, they came back with their heads full, but they. The one thing that they told me is that they, they really appreciated the ability to focus in on one culture. So we can talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. like, but if you are, I mean, if you are wanting to have that kind of range of it, maybe think about you can maybe do you know one one month in one place with one university, and you can maybe partner with a couple different um, institutions. And in that case, we'd be happy to do your kind of Mexico in-depth hands-on experience. That's really going to get them. Yeah. It's learning, experiential learning is really the only way to learn, and so that's going to be much better than doing some, you know, a history class in, in Guatemala or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's definitely they both have their basis, but if that's the kind of immersion experience you're looking for, we're mm -hmm. the best place to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We'll definitely consider that. Yeah. Um, well, thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.